thing first. Baby. There you go. There we go. Thank you. Thanks, Elena, for uh, helping me out with that. I appreciate it. Woo. I'm not done yet. I'm. Well, no. Okay. I guess I'm. I guess I'm done. Sorry. It's been a long morning. Uh, let's get this going. I've got connectors here. Yay. As you can tell, I don't adult very well at the best of times. Uh, go here. Plug this so I actually get this working right. Okay, we'll see if this works. Because for some reason it's not reorienting. Yeah. Well, it's a talk on fail, so whatever. There we go. How's it going, everybody? Good morning. Hey. It's like, that's, yeah, that didn't go well. Okay. So, my talk today, uh, quite simply, is um, about failing. Uh, what was my talk last year? If you didn't see it, it was uh, called Breaking in Bad. Um, and it was awesome. It's like it talked about me breaking into like three different places and you got to see video and and I did it because a lot of people doubt and I have a lot of self doubt. So it's like I've whenever people doubt it, I like even com that compounds and stuff on me of exactly how successful you are. Because when you do demos, it's like in these talks, it's like people see those and they understand that when you say that it's like, well, I broke into this network with this technique that's known and you can like prove that. But when you say, yeah, I just walked into a bank with a leather jacket and Thundercat tennis shoes and broke into them in under two minutes and a half uh, and compromised the whole network, how do you prove that? So you're full of crap. Because, I mean, you're a social engineer, so you're basically lying for a living. So it's like, I mean, how do you believe that? So I did that talk, and it was all about how awesome I was on doing these things and breaking these things. And it was not supposed to be about that. It was about how to protect yourselves from those things. But it came off like that. And it got me thinking, there were several issues that occurred. And one of them was the fact that it's like, that was just like, we see a lot of these talks where everybody's talking about how great everything works out and their demos run perfectly and smoothly, especially when they video. It's amazing how that happens. You know, there's no flaws uh, in the video. So it's not, you don't see the, you know, 5,000 takes before that, but you know, 5,001 was amazing. Let's use it. And so I was like, we need to talk more about failing. So this is a talk, uh, and I'm not going to like talk about to anybody um, about anything, so if you know, unless I'm going to talk about it myself and that happened to me. So this is a talk on my fails. These are not cool fails like where, you know, oh, look at that, I left an orange out and invented penicillin, okay? This is not, oh, look, this is how I failed a thousand times and created the light bulb while I was stealing stuff from Tesla. No, this is actually a talk on how I've screwed up, don't do these things, and here are some of the lessons I learned. It's like, so you don't make the fails that I did. Uh, the only thing you need to know about me is I'm really good at failing. It's like, uh, if I could make it a job and stuff, you know, I probably would, but you know, well, then I'd probably fail at it professionally, so. Uh, so that's what it is. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not just a guy who I've learned mostly everything the hard way. It's like, uh, uh, even when the easy way was presented to me, it's like I still usually had to end up learning it the hard way. And uh, I do red teaming and I do blue teaming. Everything else you can find on Google. Um, what we're going to go over is 
uh, a couple of blue team fails that I did, a couple of red team fails, and a couple of fails that I did in the community. Uh, starting off right off on the, uh, the first one, my first InfoSec job. Um, I started off uh, in security, was informa- uh, in, not information security, but it was physical security. It's like, and a couple of years on a gang task force uh, back in Houston, it's like as a supplemental officer. So it's like, I learned that people don't like people and people are mean and they're upsetting. And it's like, and one of the key things is, is when you've got a badge on, guess when you're meeting people on the worst possible day of their life. Every day you go to work, mostly every person you interact with is having the worst day of their life. Because you're there. Either something horrible just happened to them, so you're there. Or you're there now and something horrible is about to happen to them. But either way, it's a horrible effing day. And you're a part of that. That always promotes, you know, good feelings, right? I burned out pretty quick on that thing. It was like, I mean, and also I got tired of getting shot at. It's like, which was also not fun. Trust me, it's not as cool as it sounds. Um, And so I went into, uh, I went back into physical security for a little bit. Then I found out you could do computers and you could fix computers. And I was always working on computers because I was always breaking computers. And so I got into IT. And then back in 2000, 16 years ago, uh, I was introduced to information security. And I was like, whoa, you can do security? and computers and no one shoots at you that's amazing i'm all about that and i haven't stopped but though now that my job i'm doing my job now it's like where people actually have the potential shooting at me so it's sort of like a big vicious circle but uh but overall it's been amazing computer security is awesome but when i started that job it was for an internet bank i was not awesome because how did i treat people I treated people like I treated people when I was in security. Potential people that were going to do me harm or do something shady. That's not how you treat employees. I literally walked around once a week. I would do a badge check because company policy stated that if you had your badge, it's like you had to have your badge visible. If you forgot your badge at home, you had to wear a visitor's badge the whole entire day. It's like, uh, so you had to go to the get a visitor's badge, and that was the rules. So I'm walking by the CEO, the owner of the company's office one Monday, and I'm like, hey, what's going on? And he's in his office. It's like he's, he's directed away from me toward the window, of course, you know, because it's a good view. And uh, he's like, oh, I'm doing good. great, Jason. How you doing? And my spidey sense started tingling. I was like, I'm doing fine. What's been going on? How was your weekend? Oh, it was really great. It's like, uh, you know, it was all good, nothing, nothing wrong, and he's still typing away and looking over at me and I'm like you forgot your badge didn't you and he went yes and I'm like come with me and I took him to the receptionist to get a visitor's badge that he wore the entire day did that make was that cool for me no that was cool for him that was a good job for him because he was telling people that I believe in this policy so much that I'm going to adhere to it. I was an a-hole. I was a jerk. He handled it properly. That's the way you were supposed to respond to it. I look at this picture and this picture means a lot to me because I have a sign that I was given as a birthday gift one day, uh, one year by the, uh, the board uh, from this company. And I'm so bad at human interaction, it literally took me a couple years for me to figure out, oh, they meant that as an insult. I actually hung it in my wall on the office. It's like, I thought that was cool. But that was an insult. That was an indictment on me because of my reaction. The only thing I taught my users and ingrained in them to learn was how to avoid me. They didn't do things because it was the best thing to do. They didn't do it because they were security conscious. No one wanted the weird guy to come over and stuff, you know, drinking the RTD juke cup to come over and tell them that they were doing something wrong or messing up. No one wanted that guy to be around. I was not the guy to be around. That's what they learned. 
Was I helping and making an effective, secure company during that time that I was there? No, I didn't do a good job there. It's like, it took me a while to learn. I learned lessons the hard way, remember? So it's like, it took me a while to learn that, to start actually treating employees as part of my team. It's like, uh, you have to cultivate relationships. I didn't ever talk to them unless I thought they were doing something wrong. I never engaged with them in a friendly manner. It was always confrontational. I was always expecting something to happen. It's like, uh, you have to foster the image of being part of the solution, not looking for a problem. I couldn't always be walking around looking like I was expecting them to be doing something wrong. If I started going there and helping them say, oh, you've got a problem, or it's like, oh, I'm just looking around making sure that you're protected, making sure that you're secure, they would have treated me different. The relationship would have been different. If, so, if they would have detected something or noticed something, they'd been more likely to probably inform me of it because I wasn't the jerk they had to deal with. I was someone that was on the team helping them be more secure. But I didn't do it that way. Also, you have to empower the employees to get involved in with what you do. From the mailroom to the CEO, your users are part of your security team. If that sounds familiar, it's because I say it in mostly every effing talk that I do for years. Because it's one of the most unrivaled, unmatched, unparalleled truths that we have in this industry that's still a problem. Your m users are not your problem. They're an asset that they're there to, for you to use. They're the best intrusion detection system you're ever going to come across. If you treat them that way. If you educate them that way, if you train them that way, they will be part of your team. They won't be part of your problem. So we have to start doing that. We have to start getting better at that and start cultivating those relationships. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like this, these guys. These are the police in the Netherlands. Those guys are amazing. It's like they actually have Instagram and Twitter feeds of them, like, you know, rescuing kittens and playing with ducks. It's, it's, it's funny. It's like, but they've got a relationship with their community. And so they're not seen as a force for like, you know, that you have to avoid or be intimidated by. It's like, they're a force that are there to help you and be there in a time of need. And that's what we need to cultivate. It's like, uh, and trust me, it's not just security that has to cultivate that here. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem. So we have to do that. We have to start understanding that we need to cultivate and make the users part of our team. Um, my second blue team fail was actually the most embarrassing fail that I've ever did. It's like, I mean, I literally, uh, I, I blush very easily when I'm lying and when I'm uh, uncomfortable and when I'm just, you know, breathing hard because I don't know, I just blush a lot, right? Uh, and I tell you right now, this was one of the most embarrassing moments I had in a corporate environment. Um, I was uh, an information security guy for this, this uh, company and I had, one of my things that I did was I watched the firewall logs. I mean, it sounds amazing, right? It's like, I watched firewall logs. I mean, like they were a soap opera. I was scanning the firewall logs. I was looking for anomalies. I was looking for things that were going wrong, right? Well, I found something one day. It was a telnet scan coming from one of our internal IP addresses, going out to these other internal IP addresses I didn't know about. And I'm like, oh, OMG, the call's coming from within the house. You know, it's like, we've got something shady is going on and they're already inside. I'm effing panicking now at this point, right? So what do I do? I have to go talk to networking. To networking. Who likes networking? <laughs> you know, I mean, let's be honest. It's like, you know, security. We're like, slow everything down so we can inspect the packets and we can make sure everything's secure. And networks, no, we got to make things faster. We got to increase bandwidth. We got to be faster. It's like, you know, uh, LSAs and all those other things. Like, and so we're always fighting, right? And networkers are not nice people. I'm sorry if there's networking people in here. It's like, I still have issues. I'm trying to get over them. But back then, I really had issues. I never went over to networking unless I absolutely had to. Okay, when I had to go to talk to networking, it was usually after telling my boss where I was going to be for the next 30 minutes. And if I wasn't back, you know, to call the choppers and I had a safe word. So, you know, it's like, that's how I dealt with networking. Was that a great relationship? No, <laughs> it's like it wasn't. It's like, I only went to networking when I needed something from them and they needed to deliver immediately because, you know, I'm security and we need to get this done. 
So I go over there like a chicken with my head cut off. Like, oh my gosh, we got the scans. We got what, what's going on? I, and I don't. Do I talk to like any of the networking guys or doing work or anything? Like, no, I want. I don't want to deal with those guys. <laughs> it's like you know, I, I went to the manager, their supervisor. It's like, dude, it's like dude, we got this problem. We got this scan. It's like I need you to uh, pull up the firewall. I need you to check the, these IP addresses. We need to know where they're coming from and what they're doing. And he looks at it, he's like, I don't know where they're coming from. I'm like, mother, that's all I need to know. It's like, so we're like, guess what? It's an incident. It's an incident. And guess what? My boss wasn't at work today. He still regrets that decision, okay? Because I can't go and tell my boss, who do I have to escalate it to? Well, I guess I got to escalate it to his boss. So I go into the CIO's office. You know, who's having a regular wonderful day, you know, probably typing emails and doing CIO stuff. I don't know what they're doing. So it's like he does that stuff. And I'm like, dude, we got an incident. We need you to come here. I need you to respond. We got something going on. This is really, it's bad. We got to, we got, there's scans. We got to shut this down immediately. This is, this, yeah, we got to go. We're calling this. And he's like, that's, there was no word. It was just what <laughs> you know so so i bring him over to the networking area and so we're all surrounded by the supervisor of the networking team and we're all looking around and we're like trying to figure out where these are and like 15 minutes into this you know fiasco the uh one of the networking guys one of the new guys he raises his hand and i'm like are we in class it's like and he's like uh could could that be the the scan that i'm doing with the uh open manager and stuff you know on the routers Mother, couldn't you have said that just a little bit sooner? And the CIO is looking at me like, Mother, couldn't you have waited a little bit later? And I'm like, whose fault was that? Mine. That was mine. They trolled me. I totally believe firmly in my heart that they trolled me. Okay? But that was my fault. I didn't have a relationship with them. I didn't have any kind of camaraderie with them. I didn't treat them nice enough for them to say, you know, no, they were like, look at this book. Let's see what he does. You know, and I bet you halfway through, they were going, oh crap. He really went out, didn't he? This is awkward. You know, it's like, I'm pretty sure it's a, trust me. It's like, you don't try to push me. I push crazy. Okay. It's like, there, there is no like in between with me. So yeah, it was a horrible situation of my making. I did that. I created that environment. That environment probably wasn't there until I got there. I needed to learn. I needed to involve listening to them. I need to actually have conversations with them. They did not involve me just telling them what firewall rule needed to be done or what IDS signature needed to be fixed or network device needed to be looked at or an IP address that needed to be investigated. I can have conversations with them. I can talk to them about stuff. I mean, come on, let's face it, we're all geeks, right? I mean, they may be Star Wars and I may be Star Trek or, or vice versa, but you know what? We all like Babylon 5 because we're human, right? It's like, you know, it's like we all like Firefly and hate Fox for canceling it. I mean, we got common ground, people. There's common ground. And let's face it, they're just as big as nerd as you are. They're broadcasting what they like on their desk by action figures and stickers and posters. So you have a clue about what they're interested in. So make conversations on those. Don't just come around when you need something from them, but establish a relationship with them. Go out to lunch with them every once in a while. I, I plan to do that some year. It's like I'm going to. It's like, you know, but go out to lunch with them. Have conversations with them. It's like make sure that they, they develop an effective communication channel before a crisis. So that way when you go over acting like an idiot, it's like they won't just let you keep revving you up They'll say, they'll say, uh, dude, uh, slow your roll. It's like, you know, this is what this was. And that helps everybody out. Mostly you, but it helps everybody out. I promise. Okay. It's like, it, it helps the whole team. And so you need to search for all aspects of a situation. Just when it, uh, see, never make something out of you and umption. That's never going to go well. Right. It's like, so be careful with your assumptions. Make sure, especially when you're going to escalate it to an event to an incident, make sure you fully understand what you're incidenting about, okay? Make sure you have that down. Make sure you have the proper information before you go somewhere and say, this is why the sky is falling because you know, here's parts of the sky and there's that hole in the sky, it fell on me. It's like, otherwise you're gonna have a bad day. Well, 
honestly, I had a bad week, I think. It was like, it was not a day. It's like, a day would have been nice. It's like, uh, I lived that one down for, it took a while. It's like, uh, to live that one down. So you have to learn that. You have to understand that. It's like that you have to create, not just with your user. There's a different relationship when I say cultivate a relationship with your users and cultivate a relationship with your networking team because your networking teams are not your users most of the time. They're your allies. There is a difference. They're in there on the front lines with you. They're helping affect the changes that you're trying to get done. And they're also usually burdened with the decisions that you make on that network. Treat them that way. It's like, you know, you don't have to treat them like allies, you know, like, uh, you know, U.S. and Canada. It can be more like, you know, U.S. and, you know, France or something. You know, it's like, it's like we're, we're buddies, but we'll, we'll say freedom fries every once in a while just to piss you off. You know, it's like that kind of that kind of ally. It's like so it's like so, so you got you got you to gotta have allies. It's like you can't just have members of the team and stuff, you know, and people part of it. You got to have allies with you that are helping affect the change that you're trying to do. Now, let's go to the, the red team fail. And uh, my red team fail, uh, my first one was amazing. It was one of my first talks because I don't usually like to have slides of convicted rapists in my talks. Uh, uh, I don't even like having alleged rapists in my talks unless I'm talking about privacy advocacy or IPv6. But I will tell you this, uh, the reason why, yeah, I still uh, am not going to let that die, um, though Tori is. Um, um, but everybody has a problem here with this slide. Because if you're a red teamer, that's what I believed I was supposed to be. I'm supposed to go in and I'm supposed to be like a, a red teamer. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Where's your plan? How does that work? I, had, I, had, I have very low self-esteem. I have very low confidence. So when I first started red teaming, that's what I thought my job was. My job was to go in and create this chaos and like show them how the weak they were. How did that help them? How did I help convince them where their vulnerabilities were if I was so busy punching them in the face and showing them they had no plan? And, and first of all, I think that's one of the stupidest quotes I've ever heard, okay? I don't know about you, but I came from a very rough child. I've gotten hit in the face, and my plan has always stayed the same. Make that effort pay for the swing, okay? That has always been my plan. It's always been an effective, pretty, pretty, pretty good plan. It's always served me well. It never evaporated when I got contacted by that punch. One guy even punched me in the eye. Why do you punch people in the eye? Aim better if you're going to fight. Okay? Seriously. It's like, but I never lost my plan. Most people don't lose their plans. They just get pissed off that you're punching them in the face. And that was like my first, one of my first engagements. We had this guy. He was on the networking team, just saying. Not, I'm, I'm not... I'm just saying, it's a fact, okay? Not trying to like, you know, infer anything, networking. Uh, but he did not like us. I mean, he didn't have a reason to like us. We came in and we're like rolling over his network. We're rolling over this. I literally stole the computer off his desk and I stole his power supply and I took one of the cookies off his desk because I was hungry and who cares? It's like, you know, he's networking. Uh, so it's like, so I can understand why he would have a problem with me, okay? But you know what else we did? We had domain admin. And we had the history of all the passwords that they used. And we had cracked all the passwords that everybody in the company had used. It was a really good engagement. It's like, uh, and we punched them really hard in the face. And, but was that enough? No. So we're on a conference call with this guy and with the, his manager and his manager's boss. And what did we do? We used his password in the conversation because he used the same kind of the same password key phrase part of it. It wasn't password. So that's good. At least it's so like, but then he added numbers at the end of it. And so we used that word and it wasn't a common word. So we had to be creative, but we used that mother as many times as we possibly could just so he would know how pwned he was during that conversation. And he became better at security for it, right? He learned his lesson and he was so much more secure and he was so thankful for the services we rendered. No, not at all. You know why? We were jerks. 
I'm not going to name anybody else's name except for mine because I was one of the jerks doing that and I'm the one that stole his cookies. So, you know, it's like it's, it was mainly on me. That was my fault. I didn't help my client secure anything. I gave my client a very bad experience. It turns out people don't like just getting punched in the face for some reason. I mean, and once again, I hate using this, this guy, but I mean, this is, a, and also let's, let's, let's be honest here. This is a guy who once he got punched in the face too many times, his plan was to bite a guy's ear off. I mean, what kind of effective plan strategy is that in the first place? So, but he does say everybody you fight is not your enemy and everybody that helps you is not your friend. Why can't we be an adversary and also an ally to help affect change for their environment? Why don't we go in there saying, hey, I'm here to help you be more secure? Because I promise you right here and right now, if you're on red team and your ultimate job is not to leave that client more secure than we were when you left, you're failing at your job as well. Because that's your job is to help them be more secure. That's why they hire you. They don't get high, hire you to get punched. They don't hire you for you to find vulnerabilities or you to find weaknesses. They help you and they hire you for you to help them find solutions for those vulnerabilities that you find. To help you find solutions for the vulnerabilities that need to be fixed. So stop going in there thinking that you're gonna punch them in the face, they're gonna have not have a plan and they're gonna be happy about it. Come in there, show them their vulnerabilities and show them how to fix them. Show them where they are. Go in there as part of the solution. It's like we need to go and find, uh, and once, one of the biggest things is if you find allies in that and you go in there, they help you. I go into situations now and I tell them, look guys, it's like, I'm gonna find some things. But you know what else I'm gonna find? I'm gonna find things that you already know about. But management's not listening to. Why don't you let me help you be an advocate to your management to help you get the things fixed that you know need to be fixed as well? I'm not going to find that many new, new secrets. I'm going to find things that you need to be, uh, that you want fixed as well. Cause you want what's best for this company. And I want what's best for this company. Let's work together. Let me be that voice to management. That's why they hired me. They didn't hire me to show you what you were doing wrong. They hired me to help you get the things done right. And then you know what they do? And I've literally had this happen. Well, you know, there's this development server that we've been trying to get fixed and stuff, you know, and the rules aren't fixed on the management. And we've been telling management that they need to put a proper firewall right there between that network and they don't. And I think the SALs are working. So if you go and you find that discovery, it's like, and you put that in a report, that might help us get the firewall we need. And I'm like, that's a finding, you know? <laughs> How awesome did I look on that report? I didn't lose anything from that. But what did I do mostly? I helped my client. I actually provided the services they wanted, not what they hired for. I helped them be more secure at the end of the day. It's like you don't brag about going into a company a, the year after you were already there and say, ha, ah, I still got into the, to the environment on this one thing. No, that's, that's on you. That's on you. If they still have the same flaws and vulnerabilities the next year, what did you do wrong to not properly communicate that needed to be fixed? What did you do wrong not to show your client what they needed to be done and how imperative it was it be fixed? Now, by the second or third year, you're still getting in that same way. That's on them. Okay, that's on them. Totally. It's, they're, they're idiots. Okay. But... You have to communicate that right off the bat. These are the flaws that need to be fixed. You need to give them ways to fix those things that don't cost uh, $5 billion in blinky boxes to fix it. Because most of them aren't going to be solved that way. So you have to be part of that. You have to give them that. Oh, and I'll, oh, one last thing. It's like the short-term satisfaction. Hi folks, Alan Geek here. Unfortunately, it looks like the Avid Media froze and no one noticed, and so we don't have any audio for the rest of this particular talk. Sorry for the inconvenience.